ActiveVoss 8 features a new system service called the Data Access Service, which allows developers to interact directly with the database as part of a process orchestration. Using this system service, you can manipulate the structure of a database, use SQL to perform typical CRUD operations on database content, and even execute stored procedures. The service is a typical request response pattern where the request contains the SQL statement you want to execute, along with a few options, and the response is either the result set or the number of rows that were affected by the operation. You can execute your statements one at a time or execute multiple statements as a single transaction. Like any other service your process interfaces with, you'll need to provide some binding information at deployment time. For each database connection, you'll simply provide the Jindy location or a URN value that can be resolved dynamically at runtime. In a moment, we'll take a look at some of these things in action, but for a more comprehensive understanding of all the features, please refer to our product documentation. From our website, you can download then deploy a couple sample applications that use the data access service. The quote and claim samples each rely on a sample parts table that contains an inventory of car parts that are indexed by year, make, and model. Here's the page where these sample apps can be downloaded. Now let's say we're creating a process that just returns data from the sample parts table. The process request message would accept the year, make, and model, and the response is just a listing of matching parts. I've already created a new Beeple process based on my sample XML messages. And so far, I just have a receive and reply activity on the canvas. So the first thing I need to do is create a new process variable to capture the request message that comes in. I'll just take the default value. Now let's drop in and invoke to make our database call. The first thing I need to do here is define the participant. I'll choose data access from the system services folder and I'll make sure that exec SQL is the operation. The input tab is where I'll define the SQL statement that I want to execute. If I pick X query from the dropdown I get a message sample that I can use as a guide. Let's select the Builder button here so we can get a little more real estate to work with. Here we can see the optional parameters. This will force the column names returned from the query to be in lowercase. Changing the Include Metadata attribute to True will return the data type information for each column in my result set. Max Rows will limit the number of rows returned from a query. Zero means it's unbound. The same is true for max wait seconds. You can think of this as sort of a timeout for your query. Again, zero means that there's no timeout for this one. And finally, statement ID allows you to provide a unique name for this SQL statement. It's really useful when you're running multiple statements. We could just type in our SQL here, like this. Or we can use the expression builder to help us build a more dynamic query. For instance, I can use the concatenate string function to build out my where clause to only return rows with a year, make, and model that match my input parameters. Now I'll just create a new process variable to hold the result of the query.
And in the response, I'll just map the response from the database call to my output message. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, the final piece of the puzzle is to define the database that's going to be hit when the process is actually deployed. The PDD defines all of my service endpoints. We're looking at a PDD for a process I put together that's exactly like the one that we just built. For a data access service, I just need to provide either the Jindy location or a URN that would be resolved at runtime. I've already deployed the process, so now I'm going to use Web Services Explorer to actually execute it. Let's provide a different year, make, and model. And now if I look at the ActiveVos console, we can see what was just executed. I'll refresh the active process list here. And here's the process that we just executed. Here's the input message. And here's the response from the process and we can see that it contains data for our 1966 Ford Mustang. The final thing I'd like to bring your attention to is the database development perspective. The perspective is available by clicking on this small button here and selecting Other. I now have access to the Data Source Explorer where, by right clicking on Database Connections, I can set up a new connection to a local database. By drilling down into my database and my tables, I can actually edit the data directly from this UI. I can also open the SQL scrapbook, and from here, I have access to a query builder. I can execute the query by right-clicking and then selecting Execute All. And here's the results of the query. Now we've added an option that can be useful for your development and testing. If I select Export and then Current Results, I can save the result of the query I just ran as a sample XML message that can be used in the ActiveVos simulation. I just need to provide a file name, select this entry as the format, and make sure that the encoding is set to UTF-8. Now once the file is saved to the file system, it can be imported into the project and then use as sample data during my simulation testing. We really only just scratched the surface on what can be done using the Data Access Service and the Data Source Explorer. For more information, please refer to our documentation or download some of our sample applications. Thank you.